Hello homeschool moms and welcome back to another homeschool Q&A. In this video, I'm gonna be tackling a question that I get from so many homeschool moms and that is, how do you do it all? How do you juggle homeschooling with the rest of life? Now I could give you a really short and sweet answer and let you know you can't do it all. Nobody can do it all. I can't do it all. And while that's true, I mean, None of us can do everything perfectly in one day. And while it helps to give us a little bit of perspective when we're feeling overwhelmed and feeling like, oh, how come they can do it all and I can't, to think, okay, well, they really can't. Nobody's doing it all. But it doesn't really bring us the help or the encouragement that we really need. And so in this video, I wanna do just that. I wanna encourage you, I wanna give you some practical help, and I wanna share a little bit of my story in this area of trying to juggle homeschooling with the rest of life. And so to do that, I need my computer because I've taken some notes so that I make sure that I remember to say everything that I feel like God has put on my heart to share with you, and I need my Bible. So I encourage you to grab a cup of coffee or tea or your water or juice or whatever. Find a place to sit and relax because this might be a long video, but I sure hope that it is one that encourages and blesses you. So to answer this question, I'm gonna share with you six things that I hope will encourage you in this area as you try to juggle homeschooling with the rest of life. Now, the first one is the most important, at least in my opinion, and here's what it is. There are seasons of life when your daily accomplishments will reap a completed to-do list, and then there's gonna be seasons when your daily accomplishments reap spiritual rewards. See, getting the dishes done, putting dinner on the table, folding laundry, completing every single homeschool assignment that there is, these are accomplishments that we can see with our earthly eyes. But changing diapers, holding a sad child, lovingly disciplining and training our children, playing with the child so that they know they are loved and valued, caring for a sick child or an elderly family member, trusting God and finding joy in difficult situations in your life, weeping with a friend who is hurting, calming a fussy baby, praying for others. These are accomplishments that are seen and rewarded by God. I wanna read a verse to you here in Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Let's see how quickly I can turn there. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Um, God's word reminds us of something. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I think we so often think that we are only being productive if our earthly to-do list is getting checked off. Do you feel that way? We've got this long to-do list and we think, if I can get everything on that to-do list or most of it done, then I have actually accomplished something today. But we need to remember that the Lord often has more important things, things that have more eternal value for us to accomplish. So don't minimize. Don't minimize the importance of just spending time with your kids, of caring for their physical needs, of slowing down and setting aside the earthly to-do list to invest in the hearts of those around us. It is in these things that, we, that there is eternal value and, et and eternal importance. So when I was on bed rest, I physically could not tackle anything on my earthly to-do list. But here's the thing, I could trust the Lord, I could praise him for who he is, I could thank him for the blessings that he was giving me each and every day, I could grow in my walk with the Lord, I could pray for my family, 
I could read to my kids. I could have heart-to-heart -heart talks with my kids because there was no to-do list to distract me. I could focus on talking with them and getting to their hearts and hearing really what was on their hearts and minds. Now, I didn't get anything done on my earthly to-do list when I was on bed rest, but I think I accomplished a lot. And I think I accomplished some things that were way more important than dirty dishes, laundry piling up, or even the homeschool assignments. So if you have little ones to care for, if you are trying to homeschool an older child while you've got little ones running around and you feel like nothing gets done, I mean, you're thinking, oh my goodness, it's PB&J for dinner again. I haven't changed out that load of laundry. I have not gotten out of my pajamas for days. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that's like? Um, I want you to know that you are accomplishing way more than you think you are. Again, we don't want to always be thinking about our earthly to-do list. Sometimes the most important things that God has for us today are investing in the relationships uh, with the people around us. So when you change that diaper, when you feed your baby, you are giving them love and security. When you correct your disobedient child, you're being used by God to demonstrate the reality of right and wrong. When you read a book or play a game with your child, you are nurturing your relationship with them so that throughout life, you will be able to speak truth and wisdom into their life because you have a relationship with them. So I just want to let, encourage you that you may be in a season where God is uh, calling you to invest more time in your relationships than in your earthly to-do list. The second thing that I want to encourage you with when we're looking at juggling homeschooling and the rest of life is to prioritize. I encourage you to sit down and prioritize different areas of your life. Because the reality is, like I said, we can't do it all. And if we can't do it all, that means some things have to be dropped. We have to let go of some things. And so if we can prioritize, that allows us to focus our time and our energy on the things that are most important to us. Now, I encourage you to prioritize three different things, your life, your home, and your homeschool. So let's First, look at your life. When it comes to prioritizing your life, I suggest, just my suggestion, that God and your marriage and your kids are on the top of that priority list. Um, then I encourage you to write out a list of all the other areas in your life um, that you are try trying to juggle and put them in order of priority. Now, you are not gonna be able to tackle everything on that list, but that list is gonna help you to see what's at the top that I really want to make sure that I focus my time and attention on. And then what are those things that, okay, if I have some extra time and attention, those are things that then I can uh, tackle and what things do I need to let go of? let go of, and let me tell you, there are going to be a lot of things that you are going to need to drop from your life to be able to invest more time into your family, into your kids, into homeschooling, and to whatever else that God has called you to that God wants you to prioritize. And that's the key, prayerfully prioritize your life. Um, there's gonna be a lot of probably outside commitments and activities that you might have to drop in different seasons of your life where maybe it's just a child, you're, you're really struggling and feeling overwhelmed with homeschooling. Now, I find it really helpful to sit down with my husband and for us to prioritize our life together so that we're on the same page. I mean, it seems kind of silly if I think something's a priority and he doesn't, and so here I'm striving to maybe accomplish something each and every day, and he's going, this, this really isn't a priority for our life. So I encourage you, sit down with your spouse, prioritize the different things in your life, and then know that you're gonna have to let some things go. The second area that I encourage you to uh, prioritize in is your home. Um, think about what must you do on a daily basis that needs to be accomplished. What could you just tackle once a month? You know, maybe you usually dust your house, you know, almost every single day and you're going, you know, the dust could sit for a month or two months or three months or a year. It would be okay. Maybe that's not a priority anymore. Um, 
feeding your kids is probably a priority, but feeding them a, you know, homemade from scratch four course meal for dinner every night might not be on the priority list if you're already feeling overwhelmed with homeschooling and the rest of life. So I find it really helpful here in this area to sit down again with my husband and ask him, what are two things that he would like um, the two of us to prioritize in our home and what two things are really important to me? So for example, um, maybe for me, it's my kitchen. It just really annoys me if I wake up in the morning and my kitchen, you know, the kitchen sink is overflowing with dishes. So that's a priority for me is that when I go to bed, I'd really like the kitchen to be clean. It doesn't mean that I'm always the one that cleans it, but that is a priority for our home is that the kitchen be cleaned each night. Now for my husband, he might have a different priority. He does have a different priority. Actually, he he does... The kitchen is one of his priorities too. He doesn't like waking up and having the kitchen a mess either. But think about what do what does your spouse and what do you each, um, what bo- I guess what bothers you the most in your home and make those the priority. So that might mean making sure the kitchen's cleaned and maybe the uh, tile, the, the crumbs on the kitchen floor are swept up every night. But it means leaving the dusting Uh, letting that go. Maybe you're not vacuuming the carpet or it's not a big deal if the the laundry doesn't get folded and everybody's just pulling it out of the hamper. And that is okay. That is okay to do. You can pull laundry right out of the dryer. You don't have to fold it and put it away. Um, Doesn't say that in the Bible that you have to hang up your clothes every night. So sit down with your husband, think about what are one or two things that he would like to prioritize in the home, one or two things that you'd like to prioritize in the home, and then make those your priorities so that you and your spouse can enjoy being in your home, but let some other things go. You also want to make sure that you're prioritizing your homeschool. Think about what your goals are for your homeschool this year. Maybe this year your goal is really helping a child master their math facts. That means that history lessons might take a back seat and you focus more on history next year. But this year or on each day, you're just going to really make math the top priority. Uh, Maybe that means that you have a child who's struggling in spelling and so you wanna make spelling a priority. Maybe for you on a daily basis, Bible is the most important, having time in the word with your children. And so you make that a priority each day in your homeschool. You tackle that first before you tackle all the other subjects. So it really helps to prioritize our life, our home, and our homeschool so we can focus on what is most important and not get caught up and busy doing things that really aren't going to help us to meet our goals and accomplish the things that we think are most important for our family. The third thing that I want to talk about is multitasking. As moms, we know all about multitasking. And as homeschool moms, we can get pretty good at multitasking. But might I suggest that multitasking might not be the most efficient or the most effective way of juggling our life. I don't know about you, but when I am trying to multitask a lot of things at one time, I waste a lot of time shifting mentally and physically from one task to another. I'm over here, I'm over there, I'm doing that. And then I'm stopping and thinking, what What was I doing and why is that timer going off? Was that for the, home, for the test that my homeschooler's taking or was that for the dinner in the oven or was that for the laundry or is that to remind me of something else? And so I am just exerting so much time and energy trying to jump from one task to another. And also I don't think all of this multitasking is always beneficial for the people in our lives because they feel like they're getting such a small amount of our time and of our attention because we're trying to squeeze them in to all these tasks that we're juggling. So I think the solution is to focus on just a few tasks at a time. So as moms, we always have to do at least two things, right? We have to attend to our kids while we're attending to some other task. So our kids aren't going anywhere and we shouldn't think of them as a distraction or an interruption to the tasks that we're doing. But it really does help if we are just juggling dinner and our kids, or homeschooling and the little ones, 
or we're juggling the kids and the laundry. Instead of trying to juggle the kids and the laundry and dinner and listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video. So we need to make sure that we're giving um, focused, undistracted time to our kids and to our spouse, that we're putting the phone away, that we're talking with them, that we're playing with them, that we're investing in them. And kids will be much less likely to interrupt us when we are doing tasks, um, when they know that we regularly set aside our undivided attention for them. See, a lot of times kids interrupt us because they don't know when, if ever, we're going to spend time with them. But if they know that we do that on a regular basis, they'll probably be less likely to interrupt us when we have to do a task that needs more of our focused attention. Now, I find it really helpful to kind of block schedule my life. Now, this doesn't mean I'm putting time times on anything like that. It just means that I'm taking different chunks of my days and weeks and trying to focus on just a few tasks at a time. So for me, that means Monday through Friday mornings, I am focusing on homeschooling and juggling my little ones at the same time. I'm not trying to do a whole bunch of other stuff. I try to do a couple days a week, taking one or two hours a couple days a week and saying this chunk of time, I am focusing on just playing with my kids, doing something that they enjoy doing, investing in them, taking a chunk of time each week and saying this is the time that I'm gonna spend with my husband and investing in our relationship. I might say, hey, I'm gonna take a few hours one afternoon and this is, I'm gonna focus just on cleaning. Um, Maybe this is the hour that I'm doing, uh, preparing a meal. Um, Maybe on Fridays, you know, that's when we're running errands. Friday afternoons, I'm gonna designate that for running errands. Instead of trying to juggle everything all at once and not be very efficient or effective in any one thing because I'm really stretching myself thin. So I find it helpful for me, might not be for you, but it's helpful for me to kind of chunk my time so I'm just doing a few tasks at a time. Number four is to include your kids in tasks whenever possible. Now I know, believe me, I know, that usually kids, especially little ones, slow us down and we're not as efficient. But the truth is they're gonna interrupt us anyways if we don't include them. So I just think that there are a lot of great life skills that our kids can learn if we include them in the tasks that we're doing. And there's a lot of great conversations that could happen when we are just working side by side and chatting about what's on their hearts. So again, we still wanna make um, time where we're just investing in them and doing things that they wanna do, but it's also beneficial to bring them alongside um, with us in the tasks that we have to do. And here's the great thing, as they get older, they can take over those tasks. So if you have a child who is helping you on a daily basis with laundry, eventually that child's gonna be able to take over the laundry from you. So um, I just encourage you, include your kids in in as many tasks as possible. Now, if your child is playing nicely or all your kids are playing nicely together, don't ask them to come help you. (laughs) Enjoy the quiet. Thank God for the quiet that you have some time to yourself to get something done or just relax. So we certainly don't need to include our kids in every single thing that we're doing. But if they're not playing quietly, um, then go ahead and bring them alongside and let them help you. But by all means, if they are playing nicely, let them play nicely because My goodness, us moms, we need a little quiet every now and then, don't we? The fifth thing that I wanna remind you of is the importance of delegating and asking for help. Now, let me tell you, this is one that I am not very good at, or I haven't been very good at, but boy, the Lord has humbled me and taught me the importance of delegating and asking for help. I wanna read to you from Um, Exodus chapter 18. Um, This is where God has brought the Israelites out of Egypt and they are in the wilderness. And Moses's father-in-law, Jethro, has brought Moses's wife and Moses's sons back to him. And so Jethro is there and, and he's watching Moses as Moses is attending to the needs of the Israelites. And I remember reading this when I was on bed rest and 
told to to uh, rest and not move, and yet I had this long to-do list that I felt like I needed to accomplish. And I remember reading this, and God just used it to really encourage me that I need to delegate and I need to ask for help. So um, let me read from God's Word in Exodus chapter 18, starting in verse 13. The next day Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. Uh, doesn't it feel like that's how it is with our kids? Morning till evening, they are around us. Um, verse 14, when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit here alone? And why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? Then Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me, and I decide between one person and another, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. Moms, might I say that sometimes we are kind of like Moses in the sense that we have people who need us from sunup to sundown. We have things that need to be done on a daily basis. And yet I don't think God intended us for us to do it all on our own because I think it is too heavy for us to do alone. And so then Jethro um, instructs Moses to find some men that he can delegate some of the tasks to. He says, look for able men from all the people. Um, every great matter they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide themselves so that it will be easier for you and they will bear the burden with you. And I think it is so important for us moms to let other people come alongside us and help us bear some of these burdens because we cannot do this huge task of homeschooling our kids, of educating our kids, of training our kids, of discipling our kids, of managing our home, of investing in our marriages, and whatever else, whatever other ministries God has called you to or activities, we cannot do all of this on our own. Obviously, we need the Lord's help, but we need the help of others. So I encourage you to delegate. Now, I know that we can sometimes, at least I can sometimes feel like a failure if I have to de delegate tasks that I think I should be able to do. I should be able to homeschool my kids and get a meal on the table. I mean, I should be able to do this. And so I feel guilty if I have to delegate or ask for help. But I think we need to do that. We need to delegate, we need to humble ourselves and ask for help. It isn't wise for us to try to do it all. So when at all possible, delegate and ask for help. Can your older kids, do you have older kids that could do some of the housework? Are there family and friends who can step in and help you in areas that you need help in? I know some of you are in situations where you have a lot of little ones. You, you've got a, you are blessed with a house full of little feet and little voices and a whole lot of needs, right? From little people. You don't have any big kids to delegate work to. And maybe you have a spouse who's deployed or who is um, really busy with work and not around a lot. Perhaps you have family and friends who aren't willing or aren't able to help you and you just feel like you are so overwhelmed. I wanna encourage you that the Lord is not asking you to do it all. He is not expecting you to do it all. That if you don't have the resources to delegate things to or people to come help you, then please know the Lord is pleased with whatever you can accomplish that day. And this is why it's so important to prioritize Prioritize the things that you feel like the Lord is directing you to make a priority and let the rest go. Don't be so hard on yourself. But I just want to say here that I think this is an area where the church, the body of Christ, could really um, get some improvement in this area. Because I think that God has called the body of Christ 
to act as a family, that we should be coming alongside each other and encouraging one another, helping meet each other's needs. And so I would encourage you that if you are in a season of strength, to look around you in your church, in your homeschool community, and say, where can I serve and bless someone else with my time and my resources? Even if you have a teenage daughter that could go help another mom that has a lot of young kids. And if this is a season for you where you need a lot of help, might I encourage you to just accept help? I am terrible at accepting help, but boy has the Lord shown me that I need to accept help. That it doesn't mean I'm a failure. It means that God wants to bless me by bringing help into my life. He wants to bless me by showing me the beauty of the body of Christ and of us believers working together to encourage and strengthen and bless one another. Okay, my very last tip here is to eliminate distractions. And no, our children are not the distractions that I'm talking about. Although sometimes I feel like they are the ones that I want to eliminate. But no, they're the distractions we want to keep. I'm talking about our cell phones or our mobile devices. We need to eliminate those sometimes from our lives. Sometimes the sounds of social media can exhaust us and they can distract us from our priorities and what um, is most important. And sometimes we don't even realize that until we take um, the conscious effort to eliminate those distractions. And then we realize, wow, I really could have gotten a whole lot more done if I wasn't constantly looking at the notifications popping up on my phone. So I suggest turning off the notifications on your phone. And yes, I even mean turning off the notifications for my YouTube channel. Um, I try to be consistent with my content. So just know Tuesday and Friday, there'll be new videos out at noon Pacific Standard Time. So anytime after noon Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday and Friday, when you have some free time, you can come on over here to my channel and see what video is up. But I certainly don't want you watching my videos when you should be attending to your children or to dinner or or whatever. Um, unless you can juggle, um, you know, watching YouTube videos and doing dinner. But turn off the notifications on our phone. One of the things that I do is I just set my phone in my room and I leave it in there. And I just have set times during the day where I go in and check my phone to see if there's anything important on there that I need to take care of. But here's the thing. If I have my phone with me all the time, Even if I turn off the notifications, here's what I'm doing. I'm like, well, I've got five minutes to spare. I'll just check Facebook, see if anything interesting is going on there. And then that five minutes, I get sucked in and it becomes an hour. And my kids are like, mom, I need help with this. And I just, the time gets away from me. So I encourage you to eliminate distractions. And I think the biggest distraction is social media that comes through our phone and other mobile devices. So I'm not saying that you have to do this, but I know for me it has been so helpful um, in eliminating that distraction because then it really frees up a lot of my time and my brain power to focus on the tasks that are most important to me because social media is not my priority, but yet somehow when I've got my phone with me all the time, it becomes a priority. It takes over my life. I don't know if that happens with you. So I just encourage you, to look at the distractions in your life, not your kids, but other distractions and try to eliminate as many as possible. So how do I do it all? Well, I don't. I try to eliminate as many distractions as possible. I delegate a lot of things to my older kids. I ask for and I receive a lot of help from my husband and my extended family. I include my kids in as many things as I can so that they can learn practical life skills and hopefully those little ones can then go off and take those tasks off of my hands in the future. Try to focus on just one or two tasks at a time so that my attention isn't, you know, my mind isn't running all over the place and I can just really be efficient and effective in the one or two tasks that I'm trying to accomplish. 
And I really make sure that I'm focusing on the priorities that I've set for my life, for my home, and for my homeschool so that I'm not neglecting the things that are most important to me. But this doesn't mean that in every season of my life, I am, I've been able to do YouTube videos or to blog or to speak at homeschool conventions. For most of my homeschooling journey, I have had, I've either been pregnant or nursing, I've had little ones, I've had babies and toddlers and preschoolers while homeschooling big kids. And let me tell you, it was all I could do just to survive, just to care for the needs of my kids, the, their physical needs, and maybe squeeze in one or two lessons. Uh, dinner was frozen meals or plain noodles with a can of green beans. I mean, I'm serious here. I didn't even want to take the effort to open up a jar of spaghetti sauce. Just plain noodles and a can of green beans was a pretty frequent meal in our house for a long time. And yet when I look back over those years, I realize that those years reaped a great harvest because I was meeting my kids' physical needs, helping them to know that they were loved and valued. I was investing in relationships with them. And yes, my house was a disaster. It was dirty. The laundry sat in the in the dryer and got wrinkled uh, for many days and sometimes never got folded and hung up because everybody emptied the dryer. <laughs> they pulled all of their clothes out of the dryer and put it on and went then it went right back into the hamper to, you know, go through the cycle again. Those were seasons where I didn't get a lot done on my earthly to-do list, yet I got a lot accomplished things that God had planned for me that day that had to do more with the hearts and the relationships of the people around me. So I just want to encourage you that there are seasons of life when your daily accomplishments will reap a completed to-do list. There are those seasons, but then there are seasons where your daily accomplishments will reap far greater spiritual rewards. So keep your eyes on the Lord and what he has called you to accomplish today. It might have little to do with your to-do list and a whole lot to do with investing in the relationships of the people around you. I hope you found this video encouraging. If you did, share it with other homeschool moms that you know, and I'll see you again really soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.